Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tom Kraz and today we're going to take a look at Borg Backup. So recently my website uh, was undergoing some maintenance and I was just basically copying the directory from one directory to another as a backup. But I wanted something that was a little bit better, a bit more resilient, a bit more redundancy. So looking around the internet I found something called Borg. Uh, I have heard of it before but uh, I've never really jumped too deep into it. So yeah, so let's just take this journey together and see if you find it as interesting as I do. So why choose Borg? Borg has a number of uh, really good features that are quite good for us. Um, it's space efficient storage of backups. It uses uh, encryption. Uh, it uses compression in order to save storage. It uses deduplication, if that's how you pronounce it properly, in order to also save storage because the deduplication, I will talk about later on, it breaks all of the backups into blocks and if it finds files that are the same, it will find that they have the same blocks or files that are nearly the same, it will have some of the same blocks, then it will only back it up once. So you'll save a lot of space that way. Uh, it's free, it's got a B BSD license and uh, it's got easy installation on multiple platforms so linux mac uh freebsd blah 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 linux based platforms and unix based platforms don't think it's available for windows also there's a huge open source community behind it as well so this video is just going to cover the basics we're going to do a backup uh maybe play around with the backup maybe you know list what's inside the backup, do some general queries against the backup, and then uh, delete our directory that we backed up and recover it. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first thing we gotta have a look at is what are we gonna back up? Um, inside this directory on my home drive, I've got uh, two directories. I've got uh, a directory called backup, that's where I'm gonna put my backup, and I've got a directory called data. The data is what I am going to back up. So if we just take a look at the data, we'll see that it is a directory made up of many files, right? For, mostly for testing. We've got um, two binaries. One is uh, one is the CP, one is the LS. Uh, we've got a number of files that are actually the same. We're going to have a look at what the deduplication stuff does. Uh, we've got a document directory with some MD files. We've got an empty file. We've got some images. We've got some links. Um, and we've got some log files. We've also got a script file as well. So with the script file, we might make a modification and run the backup again to show you how it how it works when there's been a change and all. So the first thing we have to do is install Borg. So this is Ubuntu. We do sudo apt install Borg backup. Ah, my mistake. There's a space where there shouldn't be a space. Okay, let me take a few seconds. Yes, install it. Hmm, job done. So now, okay, so the next step is to run a backup. Uh, we're going to run a backup by running the Borg command. And we're going to type in the keyword init. Init means to initialize. So we will use this to initialize a new repo. We also have to specify what encryption type we're going to use. So in this case, we're going to sorry, we're going to use repo key. This is the password-based encryption. So this means we'll be asked for a password in there once we hit enter. Once we put that password in, then we'll be able to add and recover files from our backup repo. Uh, we're going to use the backup directory, and then we have to give a repo name. July. Enter a new password. So. Do you want your password displayed for verification? Yeah, why not? Just for this case. But normally I wouldn't do this, especially if there's people around. So you can see here my password is let me in. Okay, so this is good. So next step. So this is where we back up our data into our repo. So again, we use the Borg command. And this time we have specified some options. We have to say, we used to use the create keyword uh, and we use S stats keyword. This gives us some statistics uh, while the backup is running and when the backup is finished. And we might have or OG or, and we give it the progress. Again, this gives us even more statistics when, when the backup is running. It gives us a progress of the backups, which is quite useful. Uh, we specify our backup, our repo. And this is where it gets a bit different, right? So, so we use double colons in order to specify 
the next part of our repo name. Okay? And in this case, we're just going to use the date. So we're going to use 20, 25, 05, 05. And we would also put in the time. So we would say 22, 22. And now we have to specify what we're going to back up. And in this case, we're going to back up data. So let's run the command and see how it goes. Okay, so let's put in our password. Okay, so backup is finished. It didn't take that long. So let's take a look at the output here and see what we can see, if anything's useful. So we have the name of the repo. We have the archive name. We have uh, a fingerprint. We have the start time. So it only took a second. Uh, it took 0.5 of a second. Number of files, 22. Um, utilization, archive size. So I didn't use compression here, so there's going to be zero compression. So the archive in total was 42.67 megabytes. The compressed size is 42.19. So there is some compression going on here. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but the, G the duplicated size is 24. So this is what I mentioned to you earlier on. If you look at the chunk index, if you look at the total number of chunks, it's 43. So it's taken all of our files, our 22 files, and broken them up into chunks. And of those chunks, it's, it's created 43. And of those 43 chunks, it has found 32 unique. So that means there was 11 chunks were the same. So this is how it's managed to save data. So a lot of the, the, the chunks were repeated. Let's just modify something slightly and run the backup again. So VI, let's, let's go into our data file. And let's look at scripts. And let's go right down the bottom. Let's go down the bottom of our scripts file. And let's say, let's change this, this D to a small D. Okay. Okay, so let's run it again. This time we're going to give it a different time. So we're going to give it a 26. Our archive will have a different name. So let's run it. Again, we're being asked for a password. And this time, what have we got? So we've run our, we've run our backup, we've created our archive. It's taken 0 0.04 of a second, number 22 files. Original file size, and there's the size of the backup. So this is our, this is the archive. This is all of the data that's been backed up. And this is the size of our archive. And uh, the compressed size is 42, but look, the deduplicated size. Because it's already identified that the blocks have already been, um, or so to say the chunks have already been backed up before, it's able to reduce our overall backup from 42 megs down to 1.89. This is the beauty of, of, of deduplication when it works, right? So to explain that even clearer, the total chunks in all our archives together are 86. But of all of those 86 chunks, 35 are unique. So it doesn't back up the other chunks. It basically only backs up the unique chunks. It doesn't back up the duplicated chunks. And this is what deduplication is. And it's really powerful and it allows you to back up huge amounts of data, identify any duplicates, and then reduce that backup size down. Using compression, you can get these backups down even smaller. I've chosen not to use compression here. Okay, so what about recovery? Um, recovery is pretty straightforward. So let's clear the screen. All right. So let's have a look at the directory structure. So we've got two, we've got the backups, and we've got data. So let's rm minus rf data. Now our data directory is gone. Oh no, all our files are gone. What are we going to do? Lucky, we've got a backup. So we have lots of backups. We've got two different backups, but we're not really sure uh, what the archive name is. Uh, I forget. And not only do I not know what the archive name is, I, I actually forget what files are in it. So let's do a bit of uh, exploring of the, what, what's been backed up with the command line. So we can do Borg uh, list and then the name of the archive. Sorry, it's, it's backups July. Now it asks us for a password, so we do know that. By the way, you lose your password, you've lost your backups. So now we see we've got two archives here. We've got one archive called this, and we've got another archive called this. So let's just take a look at our latest archive. 
archive and see what's inside. So we can just do this double uh, colon again. Again, Bravine asks for our password. And now we can see the names of all of the files that we've backed up inside this archive. So we want to recover this archive, okay? As you can see, this archive is broken into a hierarchy, okay? And at the top level, we've got the data folder. So if we recover the data folder, we recover all of our files because everything is sitting in the, inside this data folder, okay? So let's just recover everything. So we know the name of our archive. Okay, so let's just clear the screen. So let's recover our backup. But first of all, I just want to mention that in that Borg has a really good um, help system built in. The easiest way to get to it is just type the word Borg on its own, and then you'll get a list of all of the keywords. And for example, we want to recover our backup. Uh, so we're actually going to use extract. So this will extract the contents of an archive, okay? So, so we're going to do Borg extract extract and we're going to do backup july and then semicolon and then this is the name of our archive so let's do it we've got to put in our uh, password let's have a look our data is now recovered so we do tree data and we can see all our files are back Now, this was a very high overview of Borg and taking a backup and recovering. I mean, it has a million other features, in particular the remote backups. So I'm going to maybe do a second video on remote backups. My name is Tom Krause. Uh I hope you got something out of this and my, 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 my babbling wasn't just uh, a waste of time for everyone. Um, I enjoy doing it. I'm not, yeah, so I will do another video then with the remote backups. So I want to say thank you very much for joining and uh, I'll talk to you all later on. All right, take it easy. Bye-bye.